And now we're running out of the uh, Brightling Sea. It's a pleasant state of affairs, won't last very long, so I'm going to try and crawl north round to Walton. We'll see how I can do again against the wind. I suspect we won't get very far and I may end up coming back. I mean, I'll go for the good weather, no problem. So running around, since I'm single-handed, I'm sitting here with my life jacket on. I've also got this, I'm leaving this ready, so if I get at all concerned I can just quickly clip on. I'm not clipped on at the moment, it's very nice and calm. Also, the advice of uh, Martin, who I met at the weekend, I've shifted the sail up quite a bit, so it's about another, uh, I'd say about 10, 10 centimetres. So I slacked off the uh, boom downfall there, and uh, that's raised the sail up a bit higher. I don't know if that's going to improve things. He pointed out that Blondie always had his sail very high. Maybe that's what's intended. We'll see how that goes. It looks alright. And of course it's even more clear of the deck, which is nice. I've got things kind of sorted out. I'm uh, quite uh, comfortable. and. I feel that uh, I've kind of got the boats organised-ish. It'll keep going, of course, but I don't know. I'm man managing things all right, which is a big uh, step forward. Last night, I came up from uh, between two and, and uh, about five. I came up from Bradwell, which is uh, where the power station is down there, and um, just all around the horizon was lightning. I mean, every direction big storms, lightning, and I heard from my friends that it was a lot of lightning and thunder in Cambridge and there was definitely a load out to sea, out that way. It was just all around. Uh, sorry, I mean out that way. There we go. Beyond, beyond the wind farm. And it was just all around, but for some reason I was in the middle of a calm area, which is kind of frustrating because I would have liked a bit of wind to sail by. I ended up motoring to Brightling Sea. I had to get to Brightling Sea to get a park for the engine, so in, in the morning. So I didn't um, didn't want to hang around all night, and also I was just getting tired. I didn't want to start making mistakes on my own. I'm still not experienced at single handling business, and I don't want to push myself too hard just yet. It still looks a bit unsettled out there. We'll see have to see how it goes. But in a warm weather like this, I'm really not afraid of a bit of rain and wind as the boat holds up. Thank you! <laughs> One. about uh, going over there. Okay, let's see how she does. Ah, here we are, turned upwind. See the weather's a little less nice. A little choppy. To, uh, to. The wind is about five to six. Turned to windward for a minute, you probably won't be able to hear. That's windward. We've uh, two panels on the sail. That's filming that it really just takes seconds and it's very simple to do. You never have to think too hard. And uh, we're doing alright, we'll see what we want. About three and a half knots, upwind. You can see the tacking angle there on the windex. About uh, 50 degrees off of the wind. Another thing to notice is the clinometer here. Look, we're only healed at about 10 degrees. 
and that's kind of normal. You don't really heal that much. It's quite comfortable. I'm getting a little splashy here, so I'm just going to get up behind the spray head here. Going on quite nicely. Autopilot's doing its job. I don't have much to do, I just sit here and enjoy the view. I have to do the log. I think I'll get a cup of tea out of the flask. Way. Need some strong winds. It's been little puffs all weekend. And I've been looking forward to a bit of a blow. Test the boat. If I just rigged this up. I've tried a little bit of this before. So all this is doing, we the way that the boat sails into wind means that there's a, always a little bit of weather helm, and the autopilot's always fighting a little bit against the sail. So I just put this bungee up like this, just to pull the tiller. And, um, well, it's holding a remarkably good and consistent course. Not perfect, wanders around a little bit, but it wanders around, it'll go back again. So it's somewhere around uh, 80 on average. It's not as good as the auto helm, it's not as good as keeping of course, but it's good, it's okay. Basically going in the right direction. And um, no battery power. I wouldn't go to sleep and leave it. It's fine. I think I might just leave this out for a bit. Somewhere. Anyway, we passed the wallet. It's 
chin in it mark the actual masks on the chart with the numbers because you could use them to count off your position the beacons so while it's behind us so we're up here somewhere and we're let's say heading about 080 on average and we're kind of crossing like that going out actually i've got to watch out for this sandbank here not because my keel will hit it but because it'll have breakers on it so i'll tack into the shore shortly that can't be good pretty much happens all the time to windward there's no leech line in the sail. So I'm not quite sure what to do to control it. The top panel doesn't do it. Just the second panel from the top. Maydays, somewhere uh, a little further out to sea than me, somewhere out here. I put the uh, engine on to see if I could get close enough to either see them or assist, but the, the lifeboats, the lifeboats have got there first. And um, we're unable to get the sail down and hit a sandbank. Uh, and they dropped it all out, but the melee was not done uh, very well. So we've got two boats on the scene and a uh, helicopter standing by. I don't think I can do much in Tammy, in Tammy Nori. So uh, I'm just getting back into a little bit of shelter because. Um, no point in me getting into trouble. So yeah, so the engine's running because I wanted to catch up to try and catch them. And now I'm just trying to get a little bit back into shelter. So I've got everything under control here. We've got to reef sail. It's doing its job. Just to give you a little idea of what's going on, here's the hatch. Here's the sea. Never shows up very well. while they're out there having a bad time. But they don't sound like, it sounds like they've, got, they've been rescued. It doesn't sound like um, anyone's killed or seriously injured at the moment, which is fortunate. They were basically drifting rudderless uh, without their sails under control. So it sounds like things are getting back, at, uh, in, back under control. I wasn't able to get out there and do anything. Not clear what I could have done anyway. I'm only a little boat, but I may be able to pick someone up if they've gone in. Now, here's uh, Walton, Walton there's the nays. that's the Walton Nays power, so I'm just going to sort of duck behind that a little bit, take stock. But I'm fine really, so I'm fine really, so I'd probably keep going north, unless the conditions somehow get worse. 
want to see the wave. It never really shows it, it never really looks very dramatic in there. On the video. They've gone quiet on the radio, everyone wants to see I wish I had my uh, VHF with an aerial on top of the mast. Understand your difficulty. The Harwich lifeboat is launching to your assistance at the moment. They will be with you as soon as possible. Um, can you confirm what size is your vessel? Over. Assessing the various bits of uh, damage and so on from uh, last night. So it was a lot of fun, um, but Tammy Norrie failed to weather the point at um, the Nays. Really, it was going to be impossible to get uh, very far north in that weather. Basically, northerly sea, strong northerly winds, about 4 7. Um, and uh, Trying to get to windward just was going to take a very long time to crawl all the way up to say Harwich which is where I'd like to get to. While I was out there there were two maydays, uh, one yacht apparently failed, they said they couldn't get the sails down, I suspect they failed to reef early enough and uh, um, lost control, uh, hit a sandbank somewhere off, somewhere off Gunfleet, lost the rudder and uh, put up mayday. Uh, second yacht called in, said they'd seen the first yacht, um, couldn't turn round to help, which was odd, and then they called in with an injury, uh, another mayday. So two lifeboats and a helicopter and a ship came to assist. I was not that far away, um, about four miles away, but it was more or less to windward and I just couldn't uh, get there to help. I stuck the engine on um, to try and get over there and see if I could offer any assistance but it, um, it wasn't really feasible and of course uh, trying to pull the engine the starter came apart now this is the new I just, just replaced this this is the new starter sprocket and already it's been damaged it starts there's something wrong this can't be right um, it just doesn't seem to engage all the way into the teeth, it only engages at the tips of the teeth on the main um, on the main shaft rocket. And so it's just going to strip these one after the other, unless I do something about it. So I'm going to talk to the people I got the engine from, the engineer experts, and see what they have to say about it. And I wonder if there's a, something's got bent or something out of alignment. So, that's not going to go. So this was all done in a hurry in the in the big in a fairly big sea. So um, I hope I haven't lost any bits. Taking that apart, I had to take it apart because it's just totally jammed against the side of the main shaft. I wouldn't be able to start it. So I had to just pull it all apart, get the get the pull out the tools really fast, get the spanner out, undo that, pull it to bits, and stick it all down here, and then use the. Uh, um, back up starting mechanism on top of the engine which works works much better uh, yeah so 
So anyway, uh, and but in the end, um, the Coast Guard actually sent a uh, sent a boat to talk to me. Um, they sent a small a rib with three guys on it, and they came up um, from somewhere down uh, near Brightlingsea, I think, and they came up along the coast and just came to check me out and said, "I, you know, are you all right?" Uh, because they had obviously they had two maydays out there, and um, I um, was having trouble with the, the waves just knocking the boat, um, preventing me from going about uh, and just slowing me down. Which kept knocking the speed out of the boat. So I would what I'd done is I'd um, tacked in right close to the shore at uh, well ha uh, Walton on the Nays by that time. I was just south of Walton on the Nays, and um, just to get out of the ways and. It was fine, uh, it, there really wasn't any problem. I just got in fairly close, about half a mile off, and that calmed the sea down. And then my plan was to try crawling up the uh, shore uh, and then just pop out of the naze when um, when I got there. And that would have been fine, I should have done it earlier. Uh, well, I guess the maydays made me go out to sea that helped trying to help, but the, um, uh, that would have worked better and I would have made more a uh, better angle to windward because the, the waves wouldn't have been pushing me off. But um, by that time it's getting dark, uh, I'm getting a bit tired. The Coast Guard said, you know, what are your intentions? And they were like, are you okay in a 4-6? And I was like, yeah, it's fine. But um, I thought it was just not sensible. And I, I ended up in the dark with, uh, with the Walton backwaters on the lee um, and if I'd made any mistakes or uh, screwed up in some way, I could have ended up um, on the on the mess at the in the Walton backwaters or just on the north side of the Nays in trouble. So I just decided not prudent. I mean, it's, uh, it's not prudent to go any further. It's going to take me many many hours to crawl up. So back to Brighton Sea, um, and that was really straightforward. Obviously, just turn around, run before the wind, and run down the the waves start surfing yeah, um, the main reason I got that's when I got really wet because of course it's raining and the uh, spray hood spray here yeah. has done a fantastic job in general um, the previous owners never used it but it's really good and it makes a little shelter for me kept me dry kept me dry all the way um, all the way to windward and then when I turn around to run um, all the wind, all the weather was coming into the boat, of the weatherboards go up. Uh, but I have to stay out there to keep an eye on things. Um, and uh, got soaked. So <laughs> it was fine going to windward. But coming downwind was the problem. So they got very wet. Um, the boat's really dry. Um, the bilge, I've not pumped the bilge. I just want to show you this, this bilge here. That is about how much water is normally in the bilge. So basically no it didn't take on any water really. Um, nothing, nothing to speak of. In spite of being excuse me. This guy's been this guy's been um, thrown around in big seas for not <coughs> see I left at two and I got back at uh, one. So eleven hours. Been thrown around for eleven hours. Take, took on no significant amount of water. Great. Really pleased about that. Um, uh, other problems that are not really, everything's fine up here. The, um, this is the laundry rig. Just drying out my oilies in the morning since it's so nice. Uh, oh, yes, this happened. This is the autopilot. Um, that is the, where the post bits like that, so the autopilot can, uh, can sit like that. And what happened was, uh, I was trying to, uh, I was experimenting with a bungee on the uh, sail to try and see if I could um, keep the reefing, keep the reefed buttons together a bit better, just as a try out. And uh, I basically was standing here, like this, that's my foot, not my hand, and a uh, wave came over and I just leant sideways like that. And that uh, was enough to break the, break that out of there. Um, just through the engine.
starter handle and starter sprocket will go and that engages here, or rather doesn't engage very well there. So just had to remove it all, get it out of the way quick so I could put the emergency starter cord on here and pull it up. Although I did notice that quite when the, you open this compartment here in, this, in a heavy sea, you get to water splashed over, salt water, and that's going to run down here into this compartment. Um, and the battery was getting splashed with salt water, so this might be that's salty, that's salty there. So uh, this isn't too good, and this has got to change. Uh, the battery can't live out here, I think. It's a nice idea to keep it all compact over and use the space, but it's not going to work because that'll just corrode away all that stuff. So, new the arrangement, there you are. Sailing's good, sailing's good, um, and uh, I really enjoyed myself. Uh, it's a shame that I've ended up where I started. I would really like to have been further north. This kind of will have to change my plans, but there you are. Sailing by the wind.